Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, I hope you getting the home and being cool and whatever because it's, it's pretty warm out there right at this point in time but uh, but here we are in Oregon but we're still in the probably one of the most beautiful states in the country <laughs> nice and green all the, all the time etc well on that particular situation there Harry I, I, I've got a guest here with me today that um, I, I still call him he's Oregon green too in many ways <laughs> but um, but this gentleman here has he's he spent a lot of time here in Oregon and in this community and and he's been very very active he's an activist in his own right and like he's taught me a lot of things too since i've been here but uh i'm talking about this gentleman here his name is clifford walker and uh, you're going to be meeting clifford here on this particular show in this hour and uh, i would like for you to just sit back and relax and and, and just listen okay and um uh, so what we're going to do we're going to we're going to probably do a series of these things this is going to kind of come back and and bring us up to date on a number of issues that he was involved in but today what we're going to do we're going to we're going to do sort of a, a commemorative if you will on uh, former governor Vic Atia. there were there was an effort here this past week that um, uh, the, the, the legislature and, and and other folks here in Oregon paid tribute to to uh, governor Atia. and uh, and he read from with you I was looking for for some of the some of the involvement that uh, Governor Tia had, and and participation and and uh, in engagement and I can go on and on and on with, with Governor Tia because I knew him I knew him real well, and um, uh, like many others, but he had he had quite a legacy mm -hmm. in the in the African American community. Uh, what comes to mind, and I'm like I said, I'm, I'm talking a little bit because I want Cliff to follow up on this piece too, but. But uh, my, my recollection during that particular time, he, I can still see the, the Jackie Winters, if you will, in, in Salem. I can think of Bernie, uh, 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 Plummer, mm. Bernie Plummer, who, who, by the way, was here very active, if you will, in the Portland community. Mm. Jackie was pretty active in the, in the, in the, in the Salem. Salem community aspect of it. And then there was Kate Turan. Okay. Kate Turan, who was very, very active uh, with the governor and, and made the appointments and whatever. And, uh, you know, and so this guy was very committed. And then you start thinking about the Commission on Black Affairs, which, uh, which, was, uh, which was another, uh, we will get into that piece aspect of it too, but, but this is a very important, that's one of the things that Cliff and I were going to be talking about. But uh, he, he was very, very active. And so I thought maybe, be, I thought it would be rightfully so that, that we speak about the contributions that, that this governor, Republican governor, the state of Oregon, gave, if you will, to African American, and it still exists today. As far as I'm concerned, I consider myself a product, if you will, of, of some of the things that, that Vic did, and the commitment. There's one thing about uh, uh, this governor uh, during that particular time, he's always an engagement one, and, I, and I, I think about myself, and I think about there was only two people in this state on the political side in the Republican Party that, uh, that I, I felt major respect for and who, who reached out, if you will, and trying to motivate me, if you will, to stay in politics and run for office mm -hmm. and the like. And, uh, and that was a gentleman by the name of Bob Elliott. He was a senator. He was a senator here from the Portland area, from southeast Portland. But Bob was, again, a very dear friend. And then the other was, was naturally uh, former governor, Vic Atia. Mm -hmm. And I say that to say, and uh, I, I brought this, this issue. You've seen, as you know, the, when they identify the, uh, the, the show here as the Oregon Voters Digest, mm -hmm. This was a, another one of those beneficiaries from Bicotia, Governor okay, Bicotia. Okay. Because I did, another friend that I had met when I was at the Portland Observer newspaper, I used to right. do the typesetting for the Voters Digest. Okay. And a guy named Hayward, who was basically Bill Hilliard, who owned it. Not, not the Bill Hilliard, the other Bill Hilliard. Okay, no, I don't another, know. There's okay. another Hilliard that I knew. And he owned the rights to the Oregon Voters Digest. And when I was there, we did the typesetting oh, okay. for the Oregon Voters Digest. And then after a while, we became friends. And at the end of the day, uh, I purchased the Voters Digest from him. 
and uh, and then I spent some time in it. But but I, I brought this particular issue on because it's very important. Uh, is that uh, uh, the second issue that I came out with? Uh, uh, Governor Tia was governor at that point in time, and uh, a gentleman by the name of Cecil Edwards, who was the who was working in the in, in, in Salem, and he was kind of like the historian, if you will, of of, of, uh, of, of, of Salem of the legislature, whatever. And he and, and I and Vic would get together, hmm. and, and and when Hilliard uh, gave me the right to the Voters Digest. We sat down and chatted, and, and Edward was the one that basically said, well, Bruce, and, and, and Governor Tia said, well, look, Bruce, why don't you take the lead on this piece? And as a result of that, Absolutely. Uh, he basically, and he wrote a letter in this particular issue right here, of who's who in the city of Portland, and this is an issue that I had, who's who in the city of Portland and Multnomah County, and it's a very interesting issue, because like who's who kind of a deal. But I want to read this letter. Please. From, from Vic. It says, Office of the Governor, State Capitol, Salem, Oregon, 97310, April 13, 1983. Mm. Uh, Mr. Bruce Broussard, Oregon Voter Digest, P.O. Box 11233. Dear Bruce, congratulations on assuming the helm of the Oregon Voters Digest. All right. Uh, for nearly 70 years, the Digest has been one of the best ways of keeping up to date on the workings of Oregon's business and professional community. I am sure that under your direction, the Digest will continue to grow and improve. Best wishes for the continued success of your publication. Sincerely, Vic Atia, Governor, State of Oregon. Wow, that's that's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And I, I now this this is a beautiful piece. And I might add that uh, I gave the uh, all of the artifacts and whatever to the Oregon Historic Society. Oh, well, okay. So that folks okay. could access okay, their, sure. their their history. There's a lot of history there, oh, yeah. if you will, in that particular piece. And the the last thing that I did and, and met with Vic was that. Uh, I probably did uh, probably the last major interview that he had while he was alive, and we, I interviewed him. And folks can look at him on YouTube and whatever. But uh, but you know he's a Syrian. You know he's Syrian. He's, a, he's okay. the first Arab in this country that was, was that, that was governor. Elected. And uh, in that interview, we talked about Syria. Mm -hmm. We talked about the conflicts that were there. Okay. And to my interest, I, I asked him, well, why is it that? Uh, and this was kind of like off the record, but he, I said, well, why is it that the, that the president didn't give you a call to kind of sit around that round table to talk about how to solve this conflict? Yeah. Bruce, they didn't call. And, all, and not only did, did he didn't call, but, part of, but people within his own party didn't call <laughs> to sit down and have this discussion. Here we had a gem, if you will. Here's someone, that, like, and, 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 he had, and he had, as he mentioned to me, he knew Assad. He knew Assad's father, mm. and he knew Assad. And so when he'd visit, go back and visit home, and this, that, and the other, you know, back home, he'd visit with them. And and mm. I said, well, what's the bottom line, Bruce? It's just politics, and power. yeah, that's what, what the deal was. Yes, so, yes. but I can go on and on. But I just want to make sure we that uh, you understand that, that this particular interview is in, in, in commemoration of Governor Vic Atia, and um, and so I've said my little piece about this piece here and then I want to highlight one again like I said with Commission on Black Affairs we have with us again in Cliff Walker here he's got other things but we're going to talk about this piece as much <laughs> as we can if we got more time we'll talk about some other things and that is that he was chairman he was former chair of the Commission on Black Affairs and uh, no no the, the commission right on the, the commission, commission yeah commission on Black Affairs. Uh, 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 and, and so I might add too Cliff that when Vic put that piece together I was also on there too. That oh, first, okay. That was well, it it's, it it has. Sorry, a, Cliff, sorry about that. Well, well no, before no. we get into that, sure. Piece, why don't we? Why don't you share a little thought about who's Cliff? Just to bring them up to date in terms of you were born here. You know, just you know, lay, lay the old that piece out, and then let's get right into uh, uh, you know, oh, your participation. Oh, oh. Who is Clifford Walk? There you go. Who is Cliff, <laughs> who is Clifford Walk? What would you say to these folks? Oh, right I would say. I'm still trying to discover that one. I, I man, understand, you know. <laughs> but I'm the, the son of uh, Clifford Walker. I'm yeah. not a junior, but uh, mm -hmm. my father was a Clifford Walker. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, he was at, very active in uh, Oregon politics as a black man early out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, I inherited. Here in Oregon. Here in Oregon, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, him and. Uh, what was it Smith, uh, Oliver Smith? Oliver, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, Oliver's dead. Yeah. Yes, right, and right. He was very active. He said they met out in Vanport. Vanport, yes, yeah, yeah. okay. And, but um, 
and, but to the the Vicar Tia piece that you you were giving your recognition, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Governor Tia, I had a, an event happen to me with the current governor. Uh, I was uh, Governor Kitts Hopper, our Kitsop, president, governor? Okay. yeah, and I was uh, discharged from the commission, and that concerned me because uh, and you were a sitting commission member and chair. Well, I, I had been chair You'd for been chair twice. Twice. What, what year? What, what, what you time know, period? I, I, I'm not on okay. All right. Like okay. That, but okay. Uh, I think I must have served about uh, five years. Okay. I was chair for two of those years. Mm -hmm. uh, and when Governor Kitzhopper uh, uh, discharged me, uh, I asked the question, why? Mm -hmm. You know. And he refused to give me an explanation. And one of the last things that uh, uh, Go Governor Atiyah said to me, you are deserving of an explanation. He encouraged me to say, hey, you don't treat people that way in this state. Mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're volunteer service, whatever, we have hundreds of commissions and thousands of volunteers, people who give of their mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and, and service to the people of Oregon. It's it's you know it's it's work, mm -hmm. and you take an oath to do the right things, follow the constitution, obey the laws. So, if it, something goes down, you expect due process. And what I have learned under the current governor, he doesn't respect the due process mm -hmm. uh, uh, expectations. So how so? Mm -hmm. Well, for example, uh, when the I wanted to know. Serving on a commission is a privilege. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when you take people's privileges away from them, that's serious. All citizens are entitled to, to serve on state commissions and boards unless they've done something that disqualifies What was the issue? Don't there know. Issue. You don't, you still know to this day? Do not know. And you were appointed by whom? Uh, I think... Um, Kulandowski, yeah, yeah, but uh, and that's what's so uh, disturbing to many, and not just for myself. Yes, mm -hmm. I I can handle it. I'm a big boy. Yeah, things yeah. go down. But I worked with a young man from uh, Medford, Oregon, a black man, a beautiful man, and uh, he also was discharged. So we were politically lynched, huh. and we aren't able to address why. Hmm. And in in our attempt to close the achievement gap, we know that we must come up with answers. An achievement have in what respect? I mean, the educational achievement gap, or what, what? Any achievement gap. For example, as a commissioner, I would go out to grade schools and things and talk about the business of the commission, and. Uh, now you've exposed yourself to children, mm -hmm. and uh, they're very respectful of your your office. But then when they hear, "Oh, Mr. Walker, why were you, you know, okay? Why were you released?" Mm -hmm. And I'm in a situation as I can't tell you the answer because they didn't give that answer to me, mm -hmm. and I can't recommend to you what to do or not to do, because I don't know. Hmm. So if we're going to close this achievement gap, we need to give the children answers. And when the children ask questions and we're unable to answer them. Was, it, was that focus in the Portland Public Schools or other areas in the, in the state? Or? Well, the commission represented for the entire state. The entire but state. But this achievement gap, was that a, because I know that we well, had a major I, I, problem, I, I, still have a major problem yeah, in the Portland it, area. It appears that uh, black people in the state of Oregon okay. are not performing uh, at, at levels and standards that we might expect. Mm -hmm. And the question is, why is that happening? And that's one of the concerns of the commission. Well, still are, though. Yeah, sure. And the, and the high numbers of blacks in our prisons, our right. state prisons, right. and things like that, that's a concern. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, uh, uh, one one of the things that, that happened when we were on the commission, a lot of people believed 
the commission was a court of last appeal or mm -hmm. result for their, their issues, and they would mm -hmm. come to the commission. And our most popular concern were Oregonians were, be, were concerned because they were being called uh, the N-word, mm -hmm. and they were being assaulted in the state, and they would come to the commission. So we took up that issue. And uh, we, one, we wanted to see if we could uh, figure a way to give people better protection from that, those kinds of assaults. Mm -hmm. And in Oregon, we really don't have a system to monitor those complaints or those racial incidences. And uh, well, we got the attorney general's office. I mean, what's, what's that all about? Is that, is that not part of the, the job of the attorney general well, to deal with the whole issue of discrimination? We brought the question to the attorney general's office. Uh, what does the state recommend that young black pardon me oh, oh, oh I'm sorry yeah, yeah. Uh, we went to the attorney general and said what would the state recommend uh, young black men who are under racial assaults do I mean this is this is something that's happening and I would like to see the state maybe um, uh, give some advice mm -hmm. And uh, what we learned, we went to the governor's office and to the attorney general with our concern. The report was, in the state of Oregon, if somebody calls somebody the N-word in Oregon, that's protected speech. That's protected speech. According to the... Excuse the French, calling somebody a nigger. Yeah. That's, the, that's uh, what we're talking that, about, the N-word. I mean, that, explain that that's to what Some people this, don't understand what the N-word means. Okay, and, that's what... This administration is saying okay. that they're going to protect people's right to call people the N-word. In Oregon? It's protected speech. Who was the attorney general then? Was Hardy? Hardy was that? No, no, Hardy, no, no. Who, who's who's, who's there now? The, is it? Uh, there's Mom. a lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, she was there during well, that yeah. time. Well, this is when the issue came when up. When the issue came up. Mm -hmm. And who was prior to her? But it was just an ongoing concern because people were always coming to the commission telling us how uh, the they were being, they, the, yeah, they the were being violated. Nigger, yeah, right, and the right. violation got down to being yeah, harassed. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, so we took that to the uh, Department of Justice, the right. Attorney General. So mm -hmm. what do we tell people? And their response was? And it was, it's protected speech. Protected you know? speech. We In see, the state of Oregon today, <laughs> on the books that you can call a black person a nigger. We thought it was a uh, racial hate crime. If you, if you, if you pounded on somebody and calling them the, the N word, that it was aggravated and it was out of pocket and the state needed that's, to, that's step, to step. Yes, it certainly is. So it's, it's, so that's the kind of leadership we have right now in, in uh, the governor's office is protecting those people who are inciting those kinds of confrontations. Wow. And it's, wow. You know, wow. And again, that might, may have been the reason we were dismissed from the commission because of our uh, wanting to defend and protect people from that kind of treatment. This is 2014. <laughs> I mean, come on, huh? Well, this is also Oregon. <laughs> and, uh, and that's the real deal. It's, we were trying to pull the, the hoods off the, uh, the clannish activities of state government and leadership, and we find out uh, uh, we're not getting the protection we needed. I remember there was a case, uh, Jamin Dumas, it was a, a, a black man in the Salem area had worked in the penitentiary for uh, almost 20 years, and uh, he was uh, racially assaulted by an inmate who was known for his racist activities mm -hmm. and had been put out of the yard because he's always trying to incite some kind of racial conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Domas, as a guard, uh, in order to try to stop a race riot, took this guy down and removed him from the population. Mm -hmm. The state felonized the black guard saying he was too, I don't know, in his defense of the attack, was being too tough. Hmm. So here's a guy who gave 20 years of employment in the penitentiary. Hmm. And the state decided 
it was going to stand up for the racist provocateur hmm. and took the position of the white supremacist against the black state employee. Now, is this recorded? Oh, this, 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 this. Well, it's recorded our, at our commission. It's commission. But those were the kinds of things I was looking into. Right, right, right. And those, Makes sense. And uh, those aren't the kinds of things I felt the governor wanted exposed. Well, what about other recourses? I mean, you know, you do have a committee, a commission. Is it well, the commit, the commit, but... Uh, well, why is it... A lot of... Uh, the people who were served on the commission, I don't think, I think it was, they were there not so much to uh, do the work, hmm. but to get the glory. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. You know, because who wants, well, um, the governor's office misused the black commission. It claimed that the Black Commission stood for things that the Black Commission didn't even know the governor was claiming it stood for. Hmm. And the governor got the uh, Black Commission involved in a political campaign in, like, was it uh, Illinois? I need to be refreshed, but, um, and, uh, and we said, uh, Governor, we didn't take a stance against anybody in any campaign. Why would you send out a letter with your name on it, the state seal, and claim that the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs had taken a position it didn't know anything about? Governor Kitzhaber. Yes. And uh, we said, you don't, you don't disrespect people like that. If you mm -hmm. want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. You want to persuade us that this is a position we need to take, we're open. We'll listen. But... They were misrepresenting the hmm. authority and the integrity of our commission, and we called them on it. I said, don't say we said things that we didn't say. Don't well, say clear. we... Well, clear. now, what comes to mind off the bat? Okay, now, you, you've gone to the governor's office. He's pretty well said, hey, look, we, 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 that's not our focus. But then you got in the legislature, in the Oregon legislature, you got, I don't know whether or not they were all there at the same time, but you had... Well, three senators who happened to be African American. You had Margaret Carter, you had Jackie Winters, you had Avell Gordley, and then you had Lou Frederick as a representative. Was well, he there? During well, that time? Lou serves on the commission. He what? He's on the Oregon Commission. Was he life. there during that particular time? Did during you? my time when I was he there. He was there? Yes. What, what was his reaction? He's my representative. He, I get the feeling that uh, uh, Representative Frederick doesn't want to engage. Uh, he witnessed the lynching. He witnessed the lynching. He witnessed the lynching. I don't know if he was a part of it or not. Did anyone go? Uh, did anyone actually sought you out? You know, I'm, uh, the individuals that I like, Margaret, Margaret Carter, or if not that, Avell, or, or Jackie Winters. I mean, they're they're they're. No, uh, I don't feel like that. I think the the political. There were a couple people that. Uh, there was an incident. Remember uh, Derry Jackson? I remember Derry. Yeah. Okay. Derry, yeah, at the and, public school. I'm very familiar with that incident. Okay. okay. Well, they could get so-called black leaders to come up and jump on him. And that was kind of what happened to us. Hmm. There was a, 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 a comments, public comments by uh, was it Catherine Sadat. Yeah, Kathleen Sadat. You know, she you was, know you know, it's just the governor has that right or blah, blah, blah. Hmm. And suggesting that we deserve to be disrespected. Hmm. And so when you got that kind of uh, division, public division, you, you just question what's really going on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Senate ratifies the appointments. So, so it's not the governor's play toy. Mm -hmm. But the way it's set up right now, if you don't agree or challenge or question the governor, we're supposed to have the power to investigate. But they want to control what you look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if they don't want you looking into things. How I got into the commission on the first place was there was a story in the Oregonia newspaper about a black man who had been racially assaulted in Redmond, Oregon. Mm -hmm. 
and an hour after the racial assault, they found his body run over by a freight train in downtown Redmond. Hmm. And I was saying, wow, hmm. there's got to be more to this story. Mm -hmm. And that's what I approached the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs to say, are you aware of this? Uh, is the state looking into it? The state police are looking into it? Are we calling in the FBI? <laughs> Yeah, do something. Do something. Well, <laughs> you know, come, come on. Did they take the case? I don't think they ever found out how the, if they did, they didn't report it, how this black man had got on the railroad tracks and run over by a train. They do know that an hour prior to being on the uh, train tracks, he had been racially assaulted in a, a public place. Hmm, hmm. Well, then, okay, you made this presentation before then, that group. So then what, did they approach you from the standpoint of saying, would you like to join us here? Um, no, it wasn't quite like that. I was trying to get to the commission. You was trying to get and, to the commission. And to get a discussion going with the commissioners. Okay. And find out if they were even, th this was the appropriate place right. To, right. to go. Right, the right. And uh, it just happened that the administrator of the commission said, Mr. Walker, I recommend that you file out an application to be on this commission hmm. because they need people <laughs> who will look into these mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't mind fi uh, uh, filling out an application, but I'll do it on one condition. If I'm not accepted, I'll know the reason why. Hmm. Hmm. And I was accepted, vetted, um, Senate uh, hearings. So. Hmm. I went through the process, mm -hmm. and uh, I took it serious. I had an oath to follow the state law and the Constitution and to look into things, but I didn't realize that uh, looking into things wasn't welcomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the point where those of us who were on the commission who were willing to look into things were dismissed. They had a lady uh, from uh, Hermiston, Oregon, uh, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, she was concerned. She's a black woman. Black woman. Uh, and she was concerned about uh, the housing issues in Portland, that nobody seems to be able to make a case. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, we, had, we had some issues on that. Yeah. That, that. And she was concerned. Mm hmm. And they made. they. They managed to get her off the commission by not reappointing her, which is almost a given. If you know you serve on the commission, if you want to serve a second term, she wasn't uh, reappointed because she was a strong advocate. Well, well, what was against me as as we're talking about this? It was the commission on black affairs, right? Was it black? Was it Hispanic affairs too at the same time? It was black affairs, right? Black the concerns affairs. of blacks in Oregon. Right, that's, that's your what, work. That's, that's the work. That's the work, right? That's the work. But yet, and still, when you bring the issues to the table, I mean, talk to me a little bit more about the accomplishments that you, you now. Now you've made chair. Now you're chair. I mean, what are some of the things that you've accomplished when, when you were there? Well, when I chair? worked with the other commissioners, we had to ask ourselves, what is this commi What can this commission do? You know, uh, what should we do? And there were a few of us on the commission. It's, who felt that our only power was to give people hearings and make our concerns public record right, for right. people who later down the road they can look and say these, these concerns have been um, um, brought before the commission or the state is aware of these issues because we're a forum to let the state know what's going on and that's all we could really mm. do is mm. give people a a legal, I guess, or state uh, forum to, to share their concerns. Well, you know, yeah, good point. We're going to take a short break. We're sure. going to come back. But but you make a good point because I, I know that Vic and I had this discussion. And he said, that's why I put these commissions together, one for Hispanics and, and women 
you know, and, and blacks and whatever, because there's some major concerns here in Oregon, and he wanted to make sure he reached, reached out and got folks that, that, that was going to be a part of that to be engagement. That's right. That, a part that's of what, that's what, include yeah. Include, inclusion, people. right, yeah. uh, of those, uh, those, those respective groups. Those groups. Yeah, give them yeah. a voice in state government. Exactly, and that's mm -hmm. it. That's, that was the purpose, and that's why he put it there. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Look, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be, we'll be right back with Mr. Walker, and we'll continue this discussion. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back again to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and uh, we're again, this is a commemorative, if you will, to uh, former Governor Vic Atia. Uh, this was an area that he had major concerns with. He was very sensitive about, um, about various groups here in Oregon and how they were being treated. And as a result of that, he created, if you will, the uh, Oregon Commission on Black Affairs, Hispanic Affairs, women, Native Americans. I think I think that, that that's it. I think uh, that Asian, was, Pacific. Asian Pacific. Asian um, Pacific. So my point is that he, he he had that vision back when people knew. He, he, you know what I'm saying? And and he he made that commitment, and uh, he was governor at that point in time, and and basically assigned Jackie Winters to basically take the lead and make sure that blacks and he, he picked one and mm -hmm. he picked the person in each of those various segments from that particular group uh, to make sure that we 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 had we respond. In fact, I was. I was on that commission for a bit. Okay. That was, at the time, I was um, publisher of the Portland Observer, my wife and I, Portland Observer newspaper. But um, again, it was a very interesting piece there too, like you were saying. But we were kind of getting some things done, but it was an introduction. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we're we're, we're now interviewing uh, Mr. Walker, and uh, kind of getting a sense of, of 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 his tenure while he was there during that particular time, and we were going into discussions of some of the things he was doing and activities. And uh, but the thing that, that really got me was this whole issue of and we we got to follow up on that piece. I got to really okay. follow up on that piece from the standpoint of the whole issue of the use of the word. Uh, that you say the N word. I, my point is that you know, there's no sense in playing the game about the N word because people still use the word nigger. So until we can e eradicate it and in, in, you know, in this situation, or get an understanding, get understand what this situation. But say that that what was, what was your comment in regards to uh, under the, the current governor? It's considered kids opera. Kids opera that it's protected speech. It's protected speech here in Oregon in, today, as far as they're concerned. Today, he, yeah, that's my understanding. The, the governor Kids Hopper. It, yes, but, okay. you know it's. Uh, wow. Office of uh, uh, Inclusion and Diversity, along with the Department of Justice yes, and right. the Commission, we sat right, down right. and had that talk. Gee whiz! And then I guess you said the defense, the uh, Attorney General was also part of that discussion, right? Well, yeah, the Department. Of, yeah, Rosenbaum. I think it's, I think it's Rosenbaum. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know who. Right, right now, right now. But in my point have, is that, yeah. but the Attorney General. Right. Okay. The Attorney General. Yeah. Well, well. Again, here I am saying, okay. Hopefully, the one I'm we can pick up their stuff, and the Oregonian can pick up their stuff. I don't have the staff, if you will, and the money to get them out there and do an investigative purpose. But I'm I'm impressed with the fact that the new president of the uh, Oregonian today is a his background is investigative reporter. That's where good. he comes from. So that's a good deal, and I'm I'm seeing that in the in the Oregonian, and I and I, that's a good thing. And so hopefully he'll take this pick, pick the piece, sure, because I, we're just throwing it out there. Sure. I mean, I don't think we should be in a position at this point in time in 2014. Uh, looking at uh, still being referred to as niggers 
in the state of Oregon. And I'm not going to sit up and play games with this word about the N word. No, let's get it. Let's, let's, let's get it right on the table. <laughs> but sometimes, let's get, let's get you this know, thing. we're asked to be well, polite. Well, I'm not polite. I hear you, I, my I'm brother. Not, I'm not. I'm not. I fought for this country. You have well, too. Well, yes. And I, I'm not. I'm not going to take that backseat approach of this. Well, let's get this thing straight <laughs> here in the state of Oregon. Find out. Hopefully, the media is looking. Hopefully, those folks who are running for office, whether it be uh, uh, Art, whether it be uh, Richardson, De De Dennis, De Dennis, uh, Dennis Richardson, uh, who's running for governor, and then uh, Kitzhopper is running again for governor, uh, uh, and so hopefully they can that become part of the debate, which which again is another issue that that I would like to see because I understand they've settled all the debates, but I know I'm not there. To ask the question, and that's the question that I would ask of them: Is that it, 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 does this is this on the books? And what you just got through sharing with me is this real or not? That has to be resolved. That has to be resolved. Okay. So I've made my point. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not feeling so comfortable at this point. In time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, well, it's issue. not a comfortable no, issue. No, but it's, you know, but, but hey, I, I, but sometimes you look at some of these folks and. And, and you know, and, and they look at you. You're wearing your cap. You're wearing your, your I can't, commitment. I can't tell you why it's such an explosive word, but uh, growing up in Oregon, I've been referred to as a nigger. Yeah, yeah. You're walking down the street, carloads of people roll down yeah. the windows, yeah. call you nigger, and they'll tell you to go back to Africa. That's yeah, the kind of yeah, environment yeah, Oregon yeah, is yeah. right now. Yeah, and and you grow in that and. I remember I had some partners that you do that, man. The chase was on, the yeah. fight was on yeah, because right, the right, people right. are sensitive, right, right, right. and and uh, some people will call you uh, names knowing that you may explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. No, you know, you're right about that. Well, I grew up in, uh, I was born in Louisiana and grew up in Texas between Texas <laughs> and, and Louisiana, Houston, Texas, and and Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. Lafayette, Louisiana. See, I mean. And we had some major clans up there in, in, in Louisiana and also Texas. Okay, but okay. my dad was a pretty tough dude, and he basically right. made sure that the I two boys stayed away from that piece. You're alive to focus, talk about it, young yeah, man. Focus, yes. focus, focus on that education. You made it through. You yeah, made it through aspect of it. But I'm, but I'm here through. today, and, yes, I, and I, you know. And again, like I said, we, we, we're paying um, uh, tribute to uh, to a, uh, to a person in, in Governor Vicatia who was responding to he trying was, to solve. He was, he was truly, truly concerned. Very, very, very concerned. And very encouraged kind of blacks to become more right. involved very, very in much government. So. Very much so, and, and, very much and so. And you have to salute them after right, that. Because right. yeah. uh, we and don't you know, that encouragement. And as you know, as I, as I mentioned, when he, when he gave me the, the, the okay, if you will, to, to take on the hem of the Oregon Voters Diet. This yeah, was a wonderful. historical piece. You know, the, yeah. this was the first blue book in Oregon. You know that? No, I didn't know the that. The first blue book in Oregon. Okay. This was an information. That, this was the blue book. It's got it all here. Everything's here. <laughs> it's, all, it's all here. That's and beautiful. And we went through the blue books. <laughs> That's and, beautiful. And we're still carrying the yeah. old gold, Oregon Voters Digest here. Cable access. You know, the, the people's. Uh, so, so anyway. But getting back to, to you, and by the way, I want to mention also, too, there was another little piece that you did that I thought was very was very outstanding, was the whole idea of the sister city uh, uh, for black folks here in the state of Oregon. What was that, what was that piece? I, I very oh, much. it has a history. Grow, growing up in Oregon and come through the school system, we realized that uh, the city of Portland had a, a relationship with Sapporo, Japan. Right. And it was... Right. In, it, we Asian learned, American, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we learned yeah. about it. And, yes. And the idea came to me, wouldn't it be nice if we had the same kind of love for the people in Africa yes. and had an exchange? Okay. So I pursued okay. that, and I was successful over many years to finally get it. Who was mayor doing that particular time? Was Bud uh, mayor? Bud, uh, Bud, Clark? Bud Clark. You know, he was a Marine, you know, a jarhead. No, I didn't know yeah, it, yeah, but Bud, I, do know, jarhead. I jarhead. do know he was... Uh, open-minded yeah very very much so yeah. well, most yeah. jarheads are yeah <laughs> a lot of pe a lot of people will say uh why africa yeah a lot right. of people don't know that right. africa is right. still uh, a huge continent yes it's yeah. got more than 50 right. nations right. a lot of people there a lot of wealth right. and it's part of the world wow wow but we're still teaching yes because yeah. uh well what about our education system though were they uh, was they, did they show interest here in the Portland in regards to your efforts of putting this sister city thing together? There was a lot of resistance. There was a lot of resistance. Resistance. Uh, there was a lot of resistance. Uh, again, you know, why Africa? Hmm. 
You know, we, I think we were the ninth sister city. When I first uh, <laughs> introduced it, there was only one sister city. They were able to bring eight on board. After you get, if you initiated it, well, you 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 spread the interest. Yeah, it was a well, uh, the mayor. Society. The mayor uh, was a Frank. Was it, uh, was it Frank Ivancy? Maybe it was Frank? when I yeah. first. I remember uh, Neil Goldsmith was on the uh, city council, and it was almost laughable. That really, anybody would want to have a sister city In, from Africa. From Africa, it's wow. just the attitude. Wow. And uh, well, what about the leadership of the black community? You know, what I mean, the the, the senator elect and who are black. I mean, we're talking about black folks now. Is, is that what we're talking about? Uh, it's a it's a human issue. It's, it's human issue. It's a okay. human right. issue. That's, I got I got progressive. I, well, no, it <laughs> it was. I got involved uh, politically, kind of, in the Southern Africa liberation movements. And, okay. And and. and, and and the fight against apartheid rule, yeah, okay. you know, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Namibia, yes. all of those sub-Saharan yes. African countries were struggling to get rid of that segregation. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I saw it as a human rights issue. Okay. And one, in fact, the the mantra, a mantra, of the Southern African Liberation Movement was, "One person, one vote." Mm. We don't even have that here. Really, with the electoral college, it's not. They don't. <laughs> huh? We You're like talking. we like to think that we it's one person, one mm -hmm. vote. Mm -hmm. But in our nation, we know that the person with the most votes doesn't always win. Mm -hmm. They're talking about that right now today about the electoral college. Oh yeah. Doing I mean, it, you know, yeah. any time there's a system in place, it can be uh, uh, corrupted. An electoral college vote system can be corrupted mm -hmm. it's not about the person with the most votes wins <laughs> it's the person with the most electoral college vote wins mm -hmm. and you know for, for 50 million dollars you can buy a presidential election <laughs> you can get 50 people to <laughs> give them all a million dollars say you know if you'll vote I'll give you a million dollars 50 million dollars can throw an election in this country hmm <laughs> Interesting. Well, that'd be yeah. another subject matter. We'll jump on. Okay. That's another piece. I want to get yeah. back to this other piece. Sure. So we want to make sure we commemorate um, uh, former Governor Vicar Tia aspect of it, and going and using this uh, this Commission on Black Affairs aspect of it. So, so now now that uh, uh, they they've taken you off the Commission aspect of it, aspect of it, and I know there was some press during that particular time, and, I, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna just be upfront and frank about it. Were you able to tell your story in all due respect to the black newspapers? We have two black newspapers or African black newspapers in this state uh, More predominant and that's the scanner newspaper and the, and the observer Were you given the opportunity to articulate yourself in this story? Did they take on this story? To find out, you know, because sometimes we got to figure out how do we solve these problems here? I mean, you know, we got to step up to the plate here They we're aware of the story. You were aware of the story. But I don't think the investigative reporting, uh, they never found the reason why we were dismissed. And that's kind of what we were hoping that the media would right, do, right, right. is to help us find out and hold the governor accountable for uh, his actions. Yeah, you right, know, right, right. You know, the, it suggests that we did something that wasn't correct, and we were removed for that reason. And it, but... We yeah, but you but you brought the word nigger up. I mean, I'm just trying well, to Well, that could have been well, it. Well, but my point is that you got two black newspapers here. I mean, that's really what the other majority public wants them to do. Hey, look, educate us to what it was the rationale. Was were, were you wrong or what? What did why why did why did they, we, you go through this process? But what did I was? I and again, this is just my suspicion, yeah, and it's yeah. not well founded. But some of these papers are dependent on state money for advertising yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, job announcements and all of that kind of stuff. So they're not going to stand up uh, to... But still, the majority of communities still look at those newspapers from the standpoint of being able to define 
uh, define what black folks think of uh, in many ways. They, they won't, that's what they go. That's why they advertise. Well, I personally would welcome an investigation. Right. Okay, you would. I would. Okay. Okay. But, the, so the invitation is still there with the scanner and absolutely and the Portland Observer newspaper it, and the Argo. They owe it to they, the people. Yes. 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 yes you know, I, I got my issues and my beefs, but when the state commission that is in place to address the issues of black people uh, is summarily gutted and disrespected and there's no due process, right, right, that should right. be a concern to every uh, uh, person in Oregon. Yes, very much so. It's just, you know. But see, if they don't have knowledge of it, see, you, you just shared with us the knowledge, if you will. I mean, the, the statement that you made in regards to that's an acceptable practice. I mean, that, that, that's, that's huge. Well, you got to have an interest in politics and you got to try to follow it and understand it and it's tricky. There's a lot of ob obfuscation. And Do you know how many people react to, as you say, you know, we, we've gone through this whole business of, especially in the majority of the N-word. I mean, they're just, gee, I, I, there's no way in the world I can say that name. I can't, I can't use that word, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's big stuff. And someone is saying, can you give us a solution to it? Let's talk about it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah let's, let's talk, talk about it. Well, this let's deal. talk about it. And a lot of times the expectation is that, okay, fine. Uh, is the black media on board? Can they give us a definition? They get like an interview with you and blah, 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 routine. You, you chair the commission. What happened? Well. You see what I'm saying? We raise that uh, issue. People are coming to the commission and, and the common violation uh, was. We don't like being called that name, and we don't like being uh, exactly. verbally assaulted, exactly. and we don't like being physically assaulted. Exactly, yes. And when you're putting this, when we're being physically assaulted and, and that kind of appetizer yeah. being yeah. Uh, uh, hurled at us, shouldn't it be addressed? Yes, right, right, right. right. So we go to the attorney general and say, what do we tell people? Yeah. Uh, and they're saying, tell them it's protected speech in Oregon. Jesus Christ. Wow. And, well, the, and the we, governor signs off on it. It was uh, the word I got from the governor's office was in Oregon. It's considered uh, protected speech. The, wow. the Office of uh, uh, Diversity and Inclusion. Mm -hmm. there's a, there was a gentleman, uh, Frank Garcia. Is, Frank Garcia is, is, is I think, the, the yeah. governor's but staff. But still, the, the governor signs off. I mean, yeah, that, that's that's under his watch. That was huge. It's protected speech in Oregon. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, that that can't be. No, that that just. According can't. to the Office of Inclusion and Diversity. No, no according to Governor Kitzhaber. Yeah, well, according to. Let's be let's straight up. Oh, okay. And, and I and I've I've had him on. I remember interviewing him when he first ran for office. Okay, and good. Very neat guy, and you know, and, and his wife. They were very neat people, and. And, but I, 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 that bothers me, and I'm asking him, you know, that maybe that should be a, a discussion. It's, it's an opportunity to have a discussion during this gubernatorial race as, both, on both sides. As, as chair of the Oregon Commission on Black Affairs, I couldn't get an audience with the governor to wow. talk about how he felt about the status of blacks in this state. What did he want to see? How could I work with him to help achieve his vision? Right, right. He didn't want to meet with you. I don't. Couldn't meet. Couldn't meet with you. Couldn't arrange it. Tried. Through his appointment secretaries, so our staff. Let's 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 find out as a commission what the governor wants, because hmm. he's the leader. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to work at cross purposes with the governor. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he appoints you. Right, exactly. So we want to carry out, you know, I can tell you what I want, I can, but, I, you know, I'm there to serve uh, the people of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And the leader of the people of Oregon is the governor. And you want to kind of, are you happy with this, the status of blacks in Oregon, governor? Right, right, right. And if you're not, what would you like to see different? Makes sense to me. Well, that makes sense. Well, you know, Cliff, and then I appreciate you make that point because uh, I remember when it came, I called you, remember? Mm -hmm. I called you and I wanted us to have this discussion. And in that time, you couldn't, but you were still going through the process aspect of it. And and again, I'm going back to Baruti, and I had the opportunity to have him on the show to talk about, uh, you know, the issues that, the same issues are kind of like comparable 
to what you were talking about. Because what happens in the, in the process here in Oregon is that when someone like yourself uh, bring the issue up as a chair or whatever, they will call other black folks. Uh, the the, the uh, governor's office will call other black folks and they'd sign off on it and say, look, it's okay, don't worry about Cliff. <laughs> He's just doing this, that, and that. Just get rid of him. Sign off here and get the signatures of the so-called black leaders, if you will. And that's what we talked about with Barui, the same, same concept. And, and what we ended up with was saying that we can't do that anymore. You know, we, we can't do that anymore. This is 2014. We can't do that kind of business anymore. Well, it was like my discovery of the black man in Redmond, Oregon. That's exactly. I, you know, uh, what's going down here? Yeah. How could yeah. this happen? Yeah. 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 Uh, how could a black man be assaulted and 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 uh, dragged and put on a railroad track and mm. be run over by a train? And you asked the question. I asked the question. Commission of black affairs, right? Yeah. Of a black man, yeah. right? And, yeah, no. Does, and, does, and does this black, black man have family? Yeah, what's yeah. what's yeah. what's yeah. going Maybe on? Maybe that answer. What you know? What is our responsibility yeah. as a commission? Uh, to, to make sure that the FBI comes in and, yeah. and, and comes up with the answers or the Oregon State Police come in there and do an investigation. Yeah. Yeah. But don't let it go down yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, it's, uh, but you learn your... your yeah, but, but, that, but the idea, the commitment that former Governor Vicatia had, I remember having this discussion with him. He said, Bruce, I'm committed to this. We got we to gotta keep talking about these issues. And that's why I did what I did. Okay. So my point is, now, in all due respect, he's poor guy is not here with us anymore. Should we have a black commission, a commission on black affairs? Or should we have, even have any of the commissioners at this point in time? What do you think? I think we should look at what they're doing. No, should we have a, a black commission, an African-American? It's, it's a, I don't know. Okay. You know, there's... But if you've got issues you know, out there, don't well, you? got issues. People, well, people want to know what's going on. But if you, if you have an investigative body... Okay, okay. That you don't support that body looking into things. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of money. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now, that's the bottom line. That's what I was looking at. Yeah. So why even have one? Why have it? Yeah. Well, if, if you're not going to allow it to perform its mandate, then you're wasting taxpayers' right, money. Right, right. But former Governor Vicar Taylor felt we needed one. That's why he did it. Not only did he feel that we yeah. needed one when he found out about my situation yes he encouraged me to say you are entitled yes. to an answer so he encouraged yes. me to stand up for what was right yes. mm -hmm. and 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 i guess he felt like if i stood up for uh due process mm -hmm. then all black all people mm -hmm. we need due process mm -hmm. it's not a black issue due right, process right, 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 is right. a human issue that's right exactly and, and, that. and that's all that well that's is. why he looked at the whole deal it yeah, wasn't just yeah. quote just the black commission on black affairs. No, no, no. no he, he, he. But he's saying you should be treated equally. That's right. That's right. You should that's right, be treated right. fairly. That's right. But he included these other groups also oh, yeah. too, because there were issues there. Oh, sure. Area. And they, they needed some. Well, way Oregon out. has a reputation of being pretty much an exclusive yeah. white club. Yeah. Right. And right. people are right. sensitive. Well, let's right. bring in the Asians and the Hispanics right. and right. the black right. Right. and women and, right. and and let's listen to their voices. But people want change now, don't you think that the that the that the, the, the so-called white club doesn't want to exist anymore? They do not want to exist that way. They just want to exist in Oregonians, don't you think that that's the case now? Say that again, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm saying that the, the majority of Oregonians today today are saying we don't want this white club. We we want to be Oregonians, and we're inclusive. I mean, that's what I preach when I run for office. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you say? What do you say about that? You, you think, Bruce? You know that I have thrown my uh, hat into the political arena. Yeah, yeah. The reason I ran for mayor of this city. Right. The reason I ran for mayor was to try. I knew that the mayor was in control of the police department. Right. And the things that were happening in the police department were not pretty. They were ugly. Mm -hmm. And the only way we could change it was to get an executive in the city to, to do something different. Mm -hmm. And that's why I ran. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was not successful in being elected. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's, there's issues, there's problems. You know, we, we, have to, we have to stand up. We, uh, it's, but it's not welcomed. Yeah, it's yeah, not welcome. Yeah. Uh, 
people want to, we don't have a race problem in Oregon because uh, we don't address the complaints. We give no attention to it. We pretend like there aren't any problems. Now we can pretend like there aren't any problems. Maybe people believe there aren't any problems. Yeah, but Cliff, but, but again, a lot of on, on the, in the majority community are saying, well, gee, where's a, I've talked to some, some specific black leaders and they said, that's not a problem. Well, I live in North Portland, not far from where Kendra James was assassinated. I remember that. We did a couple of shows on that. Okay. Yes. We got a problem. Yes. When the police are assassinating people for fear that they might get away and go where? Home? There's just no excuse. Mm -hmm. It's unpardonable. Mm -hmm. it's, you don't do. I can go back. I don't even know how far back, how many black people have been murdered in this town by the police. And, and uh, we have tolerated it. And we don't know what to do about it. Hmm. What we, should we do? What, what can we do? Well, I, I, I personally say we need the kind of leadership, black or white. It right. doesn't, okay. it isn't right. about, right. you know. Right, I agree. Yeah, that it's gonna do something about right. it. Okay. So I guess there's some elections coming up and uh, based on my experiences, I'm not comfortable with the white leadership. Hmm. Well, we got a mayor, this. Charlie Hill, who's basically leading this whole issue about uh, police reform. Good. Ministerial Alliance is involved in that piece. Uh, Joanne Bowman, what they're doing. I participated I, on a commission, uh, uh, an advisory council. I to was the, on that too. Yeah, we did that. Uh, yeah, yeah, advisory yeah, council that. to the uh, to the mayor. I think Vera Katz was there. She was. It was Vera Katz. I don't know. I think it might have been Tom Potter, but oh, it was okay. a, a group of African Americans who who uh, agreed to be an advisory council to Board the chief of police. Oh, okay. I wouldn't and, know. No, and they suggested and advised that. Anytime there was an, a police shooting incident, did the police be tested for drugs? Just mm -hmm. that's just part of it. Was it was Tom Potter. It was it was uh, yeah former mayor Potter. But they're not following through with the recommendations. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have a council of people say, at least we would be assured that people who are uh, are what do you say uh, are sworn to protect are sober. Yeah, I got you. And we had we can't even get that. Yes. Well, look. Cliff. Yes, sir, Bob. This has been an excellent <laughs> interview. I'm sure that oh, you're Vic kind. would. I'm sure that Dick would have appreciated this. And well, I love this. This it. wasn't the kind of response they were getting out of the legislature when they were doing that. The legislature. We're having our own. See, we, okay. I just want to make sure that that, that 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 we give him the respect for the fact of, of the efforts that he has made that doing his stay here, and while he was governor and the like. And um, so, Vic, we appreciate you. And the Voters Digest will continue. Yes, please. We will continue with the Voters Digest and. Um, we love you, Vic. You and and, good and I personally appreciate yes. Governor Vic Atia's encouragement that we stand up and do yes. the right things. Very much so. Okay. Again, thanks again, everybody. Yeah. Again, again, uh, we lost a great person, and again, we we respect him, and also to his wife who stood by his side, mm. and all along all these years. Okay, love both of them. Again, this is Bruce Broussard. Have a good day. See you next.